before work if you no, know No, I wake up at 8 and I leave at 9. <laughs> All Actually, right. sometimes it's I don't so wake up until 8.45. Like, All right. The, 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 five and do it or something. I, I went over the panel uh, last time because I think it, it has the potential to be used for uh, your one assignment that may or may not be due. So three weeks from now when you work on that. <laughs> And you, and you boot your computer with today's date on it, <laughs> so you have the proper time stamps. Um, you, can use the, you can use the panel control to help you out on that one. And again, it just saves you the trouble of um, doing something with every individual control. You can just do it with the panel, and you take care of everything. Now, but, but the bigger lesson, you know, always look at, you know, the... the, the, the the, the stated lesson, but then try to try to expand on it in the bigger lesson because we can't go over everything in this class. Um, there are a bunch of controls in the .NET framework, and there's a bunch of things that you can do with them. So what I'm trying to do by showing you a sampling of these is to point out um, that you have control over the page. You have control over these uh, ASP.NET components. And you can program them to do pretty much whatever you want them to do. So you can make them appear or disappear or so on. So, for example, could you make an image that when you clicked on it, the image got bigger? Yeah, I'll bet you can. All right. Do I know how to do that? No, not off the top of my head. But I'll bet I could figure it out pretty quickly. All right. Why? Because I know everything on the page is just a matter of those controls and the attributes associated with those controls. And I can do anything with those attributes that I, that I want to. It's just a matter of finding out how to do it uh, and, and finding out which attribute is relevant, um, how do I set it, how do I trigger the, uh, the event to occur, and so on and so forth. All right? Yes? So as a panel, analogous to a div, yeah, in a way, it's a container. Yeah. In fact, uh, again, it is always beneficial, or is often beneficial, to actually look at the HTML that gets generated, because that a lot of times gives you insight uh, um, into the control. All right, so I was debating whether to, sh to, to try the um, image resize, but I'll leave that to you if you, if you want to <laughs> practice that one. I'll give you something to practice on. If you want. All right. Because what I do want to do is I want to get into some of the other form controls. Um, specifically, I want to actually do something with the form controls. So um, we put text boxes on there and we validated that they were entered, but we haven't really done anything significant with, with them once we've filled them in. All right. So what uh, I'm going to do is we're going to create a form with multiple controls on it, and then we'll do something when uh, when uh, different things are clicked. All right. Let's do something. I was playing around with this in my Android class. Um, let's make a, a simple like tip calculator. Um, bill at a restaurant web page. Because you know if you go to a restaurant, that's the first thing you're going to do is try to open your mobile phone, go to this, go to a browser and use a tool to calculate your tip, right? So this is very, very relevant. So what I'm going to want is I'm going to want a lab label for the bill, a text box for the bill, a label for the level of service. And we'll make that a drop down, right? Because we only want certain potential levels of service, and we'll have poor, average, and excellent. Poor will give no tip. Average will give 15%. Excellent will give 20%. Finally, we will have a checkbox for. Dine in. That's either yes or no. In fact, just to muddy the waters a little bit, 
If it's not dine-in, they don't get a tip at all, no matter what their service is, right? Now, how often do you tip on carry-out? If I'm in a really good mood and the person at Chipotle's is nice to me, I might throw the change in, all right? But generally speaking, normal rules of tippery don't apply. Uh, <laughs> tippery. And we could we can could concoct our own rules. Maybe if they give excellent service, even if it's carry out, we'll give them a dollar tip or something. We can expand on that. For now, we will just say the level of service only applies, or the tip uh, amount only applies to uh, dine in. So we'll have a calculation for a tip. We'll have a calculation for sales tax, and then we'll have a calculation for total. All right. So, what do we need for this? All right. What do we need for this? We need some labels. We need a text box for this so that they can enter it in. We need a drop-down list for this, which is a new control which we haven't covered. I suppose we could do this also with radio buttons. Maybe we'll do it one way and then do it the next way too. All right. Um, we need a checkbox for this, and I drew these like text boxes, but we really need labels for these, right? Pardon me? Never mind. Okay. I'm going to make these labels because these are calculated fields. So we need labels for the results. Conceivably, we could make those text boxes and just allow or just change so that they can't be entered into. That's cheating in my book. That's lying to the web server, all right? Because that's not a text box. You never want someone to be able to enter data in there, all right? The data, the, the fields that you want to enter data in are these three. The rest are calculated. So I would urge you not to do the bit of making it a text box and um, tweaking it around so that you can't enter it. But what if I want it to look like a text box? Well, we have an answer for that, right? If we want it to look like a text box, we CSS it to look like a text box. All right? We give it a white background, for example, or we put a border on it or whatever. All right, so this is what we're going to do. Now, <coughs> initially, we're going to put validation on the bill to make sure that they've entered something in and make sure they've entered in a valid number. All right, can I validate any of these other two fields? Not really, right? A drop down always has a value, right? So, are you questioning that? Well, yeah, I guess it always does have a value, but you can always have a blank value. You can always have a blank value. Initially, we're not going to do it with a blank value. So initially, we won't validate that because it will always have to be, the, the drop down, unless you assign a value, it's always going to have a value of the top item by default. So yeah, we could put in a dummy value up here. We'll do that in phase two, all right? And can we validate the checkbox? Of course not. Right? We can't tell them they have to dine in. All right. What's about the only time you could validate a checkbox? You've all seen forms where they validated a checkbox. I can guarantee User it. User agreement. User agreement. Right. Do you agree with this? You know, uh, they won't let you go by unless you check it. So yeah, that's the one case where you validate a checkbox. Other than that, if you're really answering a question that the user really has an option to answer yes or no, then you can't validate it. Right, because either of the two answers are valid. I believe this is different than if you've taken VB. In VB, I believe it is possible for a dropdown not to have a value. All right. Um, I don't do a lot of VB programming, so I'm not sure. But like, if you're doing a desktop app, I believe the dropdowns are. I might be mistaken. At any rate, here has to have a value. All right. So let's get to work. in all my class is the notion of design. And design depends on the context you're talking about. Design can
can be many things. For someone that is involved in, in web programming, a lot of times they think of design as the, the pretty colors that you're going to make the page and the fonts you're going to use and all that. To be sure, that's a small component of design. Even if you're developing static pages, though, design of web pages gets a lot more detail than that. It deals with organizing the page in a way that, it, organizing the site and the pages in such a way that they're usable and that people can find the stuff that they want to, uh, etc. So, um, this doesn't happen by accident. It should happen by planning. And I'm not going to spend tons of time on the visual aspect of the page, all right? But it is always good before you do it to sort of take inventory of the stuff that you're going to put on the page, like I did up there, you know, especially as you become more familiar with the controls. It's like, what am I going to have to have? Well, I'll have this, 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 this and so on. I will take a little bit of time to um, design the page to make it look a little nicer than, than what we you know, the, the, than the default. Remember, the, 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 the criteria for your homework assignments is it should look like a completed web page. I realize that that is um, a bit subjective, all right? But if you have not applied any CSS to your page, I can guarantee that I'm not going to consider that a completed page, all right? I can just guarantee it. If there's no formatting at all, if you paid no attention to formatting, that's not a completed page. All right. Okay, so let's go and let's create our application. Crack open Visual Studio. someday we'll complete a website uh, or create a website not a empty website but you know we're still new here so we want to we want to practice doing everything all right so visual c sharp empty website i'm going to browse and put it on the desktop and i'm going to call it tip calculator Again, give your projects names. Don't I, if I see website one, website two. Again, I'm liable to flip. All right, and 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 not give. Likewise, give give your pages titles. It should be complete. It should be something complete, not like well, I just took the defaults and whatever. All right. That's a folder, but the other one has to be default.aspx. Yeah, that needs to be default.aspx, the first page. All right. So I will create that. And again, we get the folder wherever we chose to put it. And even if we create an empty website, it's actually not empty because it has the web config file. I'm going to go in and set the property so I can see the extensions which I think is important for developers to do. All right. And now I'm ready to go. So I'll go and I'll go under File, New, File, Create a Web Form. I will call it default.aspx. And I will click Add. And we're off. Now, let's 
go and let's start making our um, page. All right. Now, a form, probably the best way to style a form or to, to, to develop a form is to create it as an unordered list. Okay. So I'm going to go and I'm going to create an unordered list because really, what is a form? A form is a list of items that the user has to fill in. All right, so semantically, a UL makes sense for a form. Each item on the form is a, li uh, um, a, a list item. So I'll go here and I'll put in my list item and the different items um, for the form. Now, we have a choice, right? There is an HTML tag of label, all right? There's also an ASP.NET control called label. Which of them do we use for our form labels here? How do we decide that? Do we flip a coin? <laughs> Why would you pick one or the other? You're saying ASP. All right. Why, why would you pick ASP? Well, you can uh, assign values to them or okay. change the values of them. Um, anyone else want to weigh in on this issue? I'm going to make them HTML labels. All right. Why? Because these labels, I really don't need to program, all right? This is a, you know, enter amount of bill. That's always going to say enter amount of bill, right? It's never going to say anything else. If I create a, if I use the ASP.NET control for label, it actually doesn't generate an HTML label. It generates a span, all right? Now, for accessibility reasons, it's best to have a label associated with the form so that you can tie the label to the form item. So I'm going to use a, an HTML label for this. Would you be able to make it a little, a little smaller? Sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah, thanks for reminding me that. A lot of times I'll forget um, to do that. All right, so I'm going to create a... Actually, I'll create my text box. I'll drag it over. There we go. I'll give it a different name. I'll call it TXT Bill. Because this web page is meant for a guy named Bill. All right. I'll put in my label tag, HTML label tag, and I'm using the for attribute of that to point to the ID of this. is it allows screen readers to associate that label with that form field. So someone entering data in here can, can easily hear what um, is meant to be entered into that form field. Now, if pinch came to shove and I really needed to program this label, I could add a run at server uh, attribute and then this would work like an HTML uh, Oh, I'm sorry, like an ASP.NET control. Um, you always have that option. Typically, you pick the ASP.NET control because those are richer controls. You can do more with that than you can, can with a regular HTML tag that's defined as run at server. Um, why might I want to have to program this? All right, good question, right? Why might I want to be able to program this? If I was localizing this page, if, for example, I want to make this an international 
and um, we wanted different labels for French and, and German and Spanish and so on. All right, it'd be nice to be able to program those labels and give more value. All right, so I got that. I'm going to go in and undo what I just did. Yes. Um, how would you switch it back and forth if you were doing them within a panel? If you were doing what within a panel? If you're trying to incorporate like um, the labels and that into a panel so you could just hide it. For like localization? Yeah, or like for the next assignment, it's a tuition calculator. Uh -huh. So if you wanted one panel then to hide, how would you put the... Could you switch somehow in between the HTML so that that's there and it's... Um, if you want to put something in a panel, you just put your panel here okay. and it'll just drag the stuff inside it. Okay. All right. I'm not sure the tuition calculator requires a panel, though. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think how it's, that would be beneficial. Well, I was thinking maybe to display the results, maybe. Hide one of uh, the panels maybe, and then have guess, the amount come up. I guess you could do it that way. I don't recall what the requirements of the assignment yeah. are, but all right. I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, what you, your comment about if you wanted to do localization, mm -hmm. um, would you then use the ASP label control, or did you say you could just type run at? I would say run at equals server, whoops, and this would become like an ASP.NET control, but it's, not. but it's not. But you could still, but you could still program it, access it. you could still access it. And is the reason because the, if you use the ASP label, you couldn't put that for in? Correct. The ASP.NET label does not translate to a label tag does not translate to an HTML label tag. It translates to a span tag. Just for laughs, let's put one in. Actually, I'll use the ASP.NET label for the lower things, where there's, um, where I'm going to show the, the bill, uh, the, the, the tax, the tip, and the bill. I'll use the ASP.NET label for that. And we'll see the difference in, in how the HTML gets generated. All right. So... Quality of service. All right, I'll make a label for that. And I'll drag over a drop down list. All right. And I'll give the ID of this DD server, or DD service rather. I'll change this to be label for DD service. Now I have to put items in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat and go to design view. <laughs> Pardon me? Yeah. And I'm going to click on this. And I'm going to click the little arrow next to it where it says edit items. If you think about it, it drop down to a list of items. Right? A list of items um, to say... Um, you know, we want three choices. We want poor, average, or excellent. We could put in, you know, five items. Poor, barely adequate, average, pretty good, excellent, you know. So this is a list of items. Another thing that's a list of items is a radio button group. Right? Radio button group and a list item really, uh, and um, a drop down rather, both consist of list items when you think about it. All right? You are limiting the user to pick one of a set of options. All right? So both of these are going to look the same when we look at, at edit items. All right? So what I can do is I can go and I can put in items by clicking add. 
And I can give a text and I can give a value. So the text for this one will be poor. And the value I'm going to give is P. All right. Now, keep in mind that associated with every list item, there are two properties. With every list item, there is a text and there is a value. The text is what the user is going to see. All right. The value is what the code is going to see. Um, oftentimes, they're different. All right. Think of, for example, if you're entering in the state, uh, the state that someone lives in. All right. What the user might see is Pennsylvania. All right. Maybe what gets stored behind the scenes is PA. All right. Um, at LC, if you're scheduling a class, maybe the schedule will show you the full course title, web database integration. But behind the scenes, the value of that drop-down item might be CISS 243. Maybe if you're picking a faculty person, the name will show Zellers. The value will be whatever my faculty ID number is. Right? So oftentimes, you want the, the program needs one piece of information, but that piece of information isn't necessarily understandable by the user. So there's text and there's value. In this example, I'm doing the whole thing, so I'm making this up. So just to illustrate the difference, I'm going to make the text be the full word and the value be the first initial. Now, if I was using someone else's class to do this calculation, I'd have to conform to their standards. Oftentimes, this is going to be stored in a database, these values. All right. For example, you might... Um, you might uh, want to want to choose an item that you want to purchase from a drop-down list, and the database in the database the primary key might be some sort of part number, but no one remembers what the different part numbers are. People want to order it by description, so you pick by description. Yet what gets stored behind the scenes is um, the ID number. All right, so let's go and let's put in. drop-down. I'm going to go and create one more list item. <coughs> For dine-in, Now, before we go and we 